award-winning news, sports, and entertainment connection. This is the Far East Network, Philippines. The Vice President of the United States is in the Republic of the Philippines. Earlier today, he discussed a number of issues that concern military members serving in the Pacific. This afternoon, Vice President Dan Quayle got a first-hand look at Clark Air Base and Subic Bay Naval Station. The Vice President's visit, regional stability, and the future of U.S. military presence in the Philippines. On this, the Vice President's second trip to the Far East. As anti-American protesters were burning effigies in Manila, the second most powerful man in America was stepping off Air Force Two, addressing military personnel at Clark and Subic. Good evening. I'm Air Force Sergeant Rusty Barfield, and we bring you this special report tonight on the forefront of negotiations for new military bases agreement. The Vice President has already touched on security issues that affect U.S. allies in the Pacific. On the ninth day of the Asian tour, the Philippines headlined the topic of discussion. The civic community rolled out the red carpet for the vice president earlier today, and this afternoon, thousands made their way to the Clark flight line through heavy security to catch a glimpse of the second in command, the vice president of the United States of America, Dan Quayle. Thank you very much, General Snyder, and the liquid sunshine came right on schedule. We are truly delighted to, to be here and let me first uh, thank each and every one of you for coming out and to greeting Marilyn and me and our delegation on our arrival here at Clark Field. We are on a four nation swing which began in Korea. We went to Japan. We'll be going on to Malaysia before returning to the United States. But on behalf of the president, let me personally convey his best wishes an expression of appreciation for the duty that you do here at Clark Field. We know that it is a long way from home, that the sacrifices that you make individually and the sacrifices that you make as a family. And on behalf of the president, I just want to say thank you very much for your service and contribution to your country. <laughs> Marilyn and I just had the opportunity to visit the Thompson family. It's with a great deal of sadness we talked to Violetta, the widow, the son Timothy, who's 16, the daughter Anna, who is 13, and the mother-in-law of an individual who lost his life at the hands of terrorism. Two innocent American civilians were killed yesterday a member of the security force, a Filipino, was also killed at the hands of a terrorist. The work of the NPA. And President Okino and I talked about this this morning. And we both recognized that perhaps these killings were coincidental with my visit to the Philippines. And perhaps the terrorists think that this will put a wedge between our two countries. President Keno and I rededicated ourselves to the cause against the forces of terrorism. Both of us are truly sickened by the vicious acts of terrorists who wish to drown freedom in the blood of innocent men and women. President Aquino and I talked about this. Let me be very clear and let me be very direct. 
We will not allow terrorists to drive us from the Philippines. <clears throat> Your mission here at Clark Field is truly unique. It is an important facility. It is a training facility that is used not only by us, but by other friends and allies. It is a center for logistical operations in the Pacific so that we are able to project a sense of presence, a sense of power throughout the Pacific, from Hawaii through Japan and into the Indian Ocean. Your presence here and your mission here is one of peace. Americans are peace-loving people. The people of the Philippines are peace-loving people. Your presence offers a sense of stability from a political point of view, from an economic point of view, and from a point of view in the past and a point of view into the future. You are a source of stability. Today, I personally hand-delivered a letter from President Bush to President Aquino. And in that letter, President Bush asked the President of the Philippines to commence negotiations and talks about the renewal of our agreement of the U.S. facilities here in the Philippines. This was an important letter, an important request to a friend and an ally to begin those negotiations and those talks. I have met with many in the Filipino government, president, members of Congress, both Senate and the House. I've met with people from outside of government. I am convinced that a majority of the people of the Philippines want us to stay. We look forward to the discussions for a new agreement, and I look forward to the return to Clark Field under the terms of a new agreement. Marilyn and I shall never forget this moment. This moment is important for us because we have the deep honor to pay tribute and to pay respect to you. To you who make it possible for us to live in freedom. You are the ones that assume the risks. You are the ones that make the sacrifices. And you are the ones that keep the peace and ring the bells of freedom and democracy around the world. Thank you, and God bless each and every one of you. civilian auxiliary of the U.S. Air Force, and they've been around since 1941. Here in Clark, high school students can take part in the CAP Cadet Program. They'll be involved in the highest ideals of leadership and public service. Through their common interest in aviation, cadets are encouraged to set their own high standards and then provided the environment to meet those standards. Cadets participate in a variety of aviation activities alongside experienced CAP pilots and help in rescue and emergency service skills. Sound good to you? Then take the first step in the Civil Air Patrol. Here's where to call for more information.
In a televised interview with the foreign press about two weeks ago, Vice President Quell shed some light on the Bush administration's policy in the Pacific. In Quell's first visit to the Far East, he didn't stop in this country. That makes this visit crucial in the midst of the political rhetoric surrounding the U.S. facilities. We have two reports tonight on what the Vice President has accomplished on his Asian tour. First, we go to Petty Officer Andy Fitzgerald in the Bay Area for an assessment of the Korean visit. Then, Marine Staff Sergeant Ico Rose takes a look at the activities during his visit in Japan. While hundreds of student radicals were holding rallies denouncing the South Korean government and the United States, the Vice President was meeting with Prime Minister Yang Yong-hoon. AP reports indicate that the two talked about a wide range of issues, including the future of 43,000 U.S. troops in South Korea. Vice President Quell commented the 45-minute meeting was productive. He moved from Seoul to visit U.S. troops at Warrior Base, just south of the demilitarized zone. The Korea stopover also included a trip to a U.S. guard post just inside the DMZ. Reporting for FEN News, I'm the officer Andy Fitzgerald. From Korea, the Vice President moved on to a six-day stay in Japan. Speaking at Misawa Air Base, he noted it's a time of both hope and danger in dealing with the Soviet Union. He also made the U.S. position clear for support of Pan's demand for the return of the Northern Territories. Four islands north of Hokkaido are under dispute between the Soviet Union and Japan. While at Misawa, he noted the Soviets have four times as many aircraft as the United States and Japan combined. The Vice President pointed out that the United States' key Pacific ally depends on Japan because of the defense strategy in the Pacific region. For 50,000 American troops in the Philippines, the uncertainty of a new bases agreement hangs in the balance. But there are other issues that have a bearing on regional stability in the Far East. Vice President Dan Quell spoke with Air Force Sergeant Mike Miller in an exclusive interview with the Far East Network. They discussed topics that not only involve the Philippines, but other Pacific allies as well. Good afternoon, Mr. Vice President. Given the apparent easing of tension between the superpowers, do you see a continued need for U.S. presence at current levels in this region of the world? Absolutely. We need to maintain our forces. We need to maintain our defense forces. Let's realize why we're making success and progress with the Soviet Union. is because we are negotiating, we are talking from a position of strength and not weakness. Our forces in the Pacific, as our forces around the world, are on a mission of peace. Americans are peace-loving people, but we know to maintain the peace that we have to have adequate defenses. Therefore, our defenses must, in fact, be capable and must be maintained, and they will be. Sir, are you optimistic about reaching a mutually acceptable agreement with the Philippine government to maintain U.S. military facilities here beyond 1991? We will reach a mutually accepted agreement with the Philippines. We will commence discussions. We will have negotiations. I'm convinced that at the end of the negotiations that there will be a mutually accepted understanding and agreement. With pressures in Congress to reduce federal spending, do you foresee changes in our forward basing strategy? The forward basing policies aren't a matter of budget numbers. The forward basing policies are a matter of strategy. Strategy that maintains the peace, strategy that maintains alliances. And therefore, unless Congress wants to change our alliances, which none in Congress are doing now, they're going to have to continue the strategy of forward deployment because that's the way to preserve the peace and promote the freedom. Are you satisfied with the U.S. and Allied military readiness you've seen on your trip? Our readiness is high. Our capabilities are there. The Soviet Union and our adversaries know of our readiness and our capabilities. Training, exercises are very important to have readiness. Readiness is very important to show capability. Capability is part of deterrence. Finally, sir, We've had some tragic circumstances happen in the last day. Do you have any message for U.S. service people and their families stationed in the Philippines? My gratitude and appreciation for the servicemen and women is very deeply felt. President Bush and I feel very strongly toward the commitment that the people in uniform make. We know the sacrifices. We know the risk that they take. They are doing it for the cause of freedom. They're doing it for the cause of freedom. And because of that, the President, I, and the entire population of America are deeply indebted to them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
And when we come back, a wrap-up of the day's activities and the latest developments in the base's issue. Stay with us. excited about it. In many instances, we are two to three months ahead of their counterparts in the state in new hot items, and the quality is very, very good. We the Vice President's visit is timely because of the negotiations on the horizon. So far, political rhetoric has dominated the headlines. Sergeant Ted Northrop has the latest concerning the presence of U.S. facilities in the Philippines. In the last few weeks, indications that the bases will remain in the Philippines have been slim at best. President Corazon Aquino has gone on record stating that the fate of U.S. military presence is in the hands of Filipinos. Presently, 12 senators have expressed opposition to a new agreement. Two-thirds of a 23-member Philippine Senate are needed for ratification. Just this week, Ambassador Nicholas Platt stated the U.S. could remove its forces within a year if necessary, but the results would be disastrous for the Philippine economy. The U.S. position remains that the bases are crucial for maintaining security in the Pacific. At their most recent talks, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, is publicly backing at least a temporary extension of the facilities. Along that same note, Far East stability. The highlights of the Vice President's visit included condolences for the families of the two DOD civilians that were ambushed yesterday. He also delivered a letter from President Bush to Philippine President Corazon Aquino asking for the negotiations to start. Stay tuned to the news source for the latest developments surrounding the U.S. facilities in the Philippines. I'm Air Force Sergeant Rusty Barfield. From all of us at the Far East Network, good night. This has been an FEN News special report. Our opening segment of F